You have Smith, Griffin, Nace one. He's one of their better ones. You have Hardwell, Harmon, Thompson, and Howard. That is the starting offensive line. They go out of the ball, quick play action to Tony Wall. Can he go? He's across the 35. He's down to about the 39 yard line. Quite a good pickup for the Tigers. Who were three and seven last year. They were absolutely beaten by Graham, Beaver, everybody. Now for eight last year, they were two and eight. They play a six man front end for them. You have bowling, skill, scales, car, Chris, and Kale. At the back, you have Charlie Cox, Joe Rhodes, and you have Ernest Montgomery, Robbie Fix, Mark Mills. Okay, not the walk right side, and he is brought down quickly. An outstanding tackle by number 82. That is Richard Chris on the left side. They try to go to right, but he saw the play as it started. Brought him down single handed. That is a lot of three on the play. It'll be third down and seven for the Tigers who are trying to rebound from a dismal three and seven. Incidentally, they are picked fifth in the state this year due to their outstanding size on the offensive line. They are an average of 230 pounds. They are doing something new this year. Joe Tribuke decided that he was going to go with a wishbone, and the bone will do it for him. Richie Wolf in the I formation. He's got a pass, and he's going deep. He's got the receiver. Number 19. Oh, it threw his hands at the 40 yard line. If he would have caught the ball, he would have gone, and it would have been history. That is Ronnie Smith, who beat Beer last year on his last minute play. That'll bring the punting duty. It'll be fourth down and seventh, and out of the wishbone this year. First set of series. Didn't turn out to be as good as Joe Tribuca would have liked. In to do the punting duty, number 42, Mark Wood. He's a 5'10", 180-pound senior. It's a high, looping kick. It'll be taken. Oh, it's good. He went to catch it, but he will go with it. Number 23 for him. Oh, and he's hit hard at the line. An outstanding tackle. By number 29 for Princeton. He hit him hard as he tried to go around. He let the ball go. Probably shouldn't have done that, but he did okay. Good tackle for Princeton. And they will be on defense. Now, starting for the defensive line as far as the Princeton Tigers, you have Marshall Hartwell and Nieswander and Curtis Tilly. Tony Wallace and Terry are the linebackers at the corners. You have Wood and Wolf, Bailey, Autry, and Mark Wood of the defensive secondary. Hitting offense in a minute. Their quarterback, Mike Sizemore, a junior. He has the speed at 5'9", 125 pounds. They go out of the fear. It's first and 10 at the 23-yard line. It's a quick handoff up the middle. The guy gets about five yards on the play. You have Chris Reed, number 33, and then you have Gill, number 40. Reed, incidentally, 100 meters big ball higher in double A. He does have the speed. He just was the ball carrier. On the offensive line for double A, they are huge. They average 215 pounds. You have Chris, Steele, Kale, Rhodes at 202. Matty at number 7373. That's Carr. They're big one. He's on the left side at 278 pounds. And then Fazil, the wideout, number 84. They're out of the rear, second down and five, gain of five on the play. The handoff up the middle to Chris Reed. He'll gain about one on the play. It'll be, it'll be third down and four from the 25-yard line. Up in. As I said last year, they were two and eight on the air. Last year, Princeton beat them at their home field, 25 to nothing. Hinton, on their first year head coach, Bill Hughes, last year, just sort of getting used to his offensive system. They go out of the veer. This year, he's in his second year, and he did tell me before the game that, uh, you know, most teams do have below 500 in their first year. The kid's got to get used to my system. So he expects to go at least 500 ball, and he does say that safely. They hand off to Reed. He'll go across for a game of about three or four yards on the play. So it'll be first down for the Bobcats. Back only a gain of three on the play. It'll be fourth and three. They will probably get to do the punting duties. No, they are not going to punt. They will go for it. No, as a matter of fact, folks, they will kick it. And in to do the kicking duties, Charlie Cox, a 5'8", 170-pound sophomore, number 34. Deep to receive Tony Ross in the snap. Hit by him. He'll pick it up at his nine yard line. Let's do it. He tries to kick it. He does get it away. He gets it away very nicely. It'll be picked up by Mark Allen. He just lets it roll.
59 to go. Double A powerhouse to hit and out of the fear. This is Mike Sizemore, the sophomore. And off Chris Reed, right side. He gets barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. On the tackle, of course, Tony Ross from his left linebacker spot. Also, for the Tigers, making the stop, Sean Hartwell, the defensive lineman, 5'10", 230 pounds. Defensive tackle on the left side. captain this year for the Tigers is number 72, and he's a very good football player. And that is Terry. He has got the speed from the defensive line position. Make that linebacker. Second and eight on the play. Back to pass, and he is sacked an outstanding hit by number 72. The front of the Tigers just shot through the left side. Allen Terry just came out of nowhere. The offensive line split up. He just shot right through, and he nailed him. That is a It'll be third and 12 from the 45-yard line, 6.51 to go. Both teams sort of stagnant on offense tonight. The hit Bobcats got a great opportunity as they are roughing the kicker on the Tigers, and now it'll be third and 12. Deep back is Richie Wolf on the right side. Out of the veer. It'll be third and 12. Hand off Chris Terry again. No, it's a fake handoff. Trying for the quarterback option. I'm the last of his lead. will bring everybody with two deep. They're going to send at least eight men on the play. We have a flag on the play. Upside hit. It'll be five yards back to them. It'll be fourth and 25. 5.57 to go. In a warm August night, I tell you what, folks, I would want to be in pads right now because it is awful warm, especially here in the press box. Fourth and 25. Hunting opportunity for Hinton. Let's see what they can do. He hits a pretty wobbly kick. It'll be taken by Daryl Henderson. It is a fumble. It's a long ball. Let's see if it goes out of bounds. He picks it up and he's nailed right away. Outstanding. A work tackle by Hinton. Drops it back to the 30 yard line. Great job. Great job by Hinton as he saw the live ball came off and Daryl Henderson. All of a sudden it's live. And Daryl Gill saw the opportunity to nail him and he hit him hard. Down at the 35 yard, so it'll be first and 10 at the 37 yard line of Princeton. Number 50. Number 52 is for Hinton. That is Hartwell. Guy's a big guy. About, about 200 pounds. They're going to go out of the bone again, this time out of a different formation. The handoff straight away to Jamie Ewan. He's got some running room. He gets a gain of about three on the play. It'll be second and seven. Clock shows second and six, 5.16 to go. Great hole by the offensive line, especially behind Nieswander and behind Griffith. He just flies behind him, and that's what you got to do. Jamie Ely, a transfer from Beaver, has got good speed. He also opened up the hole for Tony Wallace. We'll see what Wallace can do. Princeton did not scrimmage at all. The first time they could scrimmage was Monday. Joe Tribuca wanted to keep him healthy. And now straight away to Ely. He's got some running room. He's across the 35. Make that the 45, about the 48 yard line. That is a gain of four on the play, so it'll be second and it'll be third and about two to go. For the first down for the Tigers tonight. Said something brand new for the Tigers. They alternate out of the zone this year. Shout out to the measurement a little closer. They think it may be a first down. Richie Wolf last year, as I told you, he won the Beaver game on that last second passage. Again, jogging memory banks. Great arm. Brian Smith is back. So people are picking the Princeton Tigers to be at least one of the better teams in the Southern West Virginia area. You still have Beckley to contend with. All of these other Tigers may do it. A lot of senior leadership back. Especially out of the backfield, if this wishbone works for Joe Tribuca, then he may go to state. If you remember, he went to state in his first year. But then after that, he's either at 500 or below 500 records. And he wants to improve on that. In the backfield, Autry, Wallace, and Jamie Ely. Wolfie is the quarterback. First in, first in 10, but we do have another flag on the play. Could be too much time. We'll wait and see what the referee calls. Offside, nine yard penalty. It's going to be first and 15 at the 43 yard line. For the Tigers, 44, John Brohard, and also number 38, that is Mark Howard. Howard's got the speed to go and wide out four on the right side for the Tigers is Ronnie Smith. You may never know what they can do. They can run, they can throw.
out of bounds. Good play to Reed, but he will go nowhere. It'll be third down. He didn't go absolutely nowhere. Sorry, Chris Reed with the fake back on the play. That was Gerald Gill, who went up the middle. Absolutely no gain. He's met hard at the line by number 75, Eddie Neeswater, and number 7, the Beaver transfer, Tony Wallace. Defensive captain this year for the Tigers. It'll be 32, Alan Terry. It'll be third and three with a minute 16 to go. Absolutely no score. Good defensive battle. They say who's going to be one at the trenches tonight. Both schools have outstanding offensive and defensive lines. They're big boys, especially for double-A 215 on the offensive line. And off reach straight ahead. He's met down. He will go nowhere. Uh, heads up. Great play by number 58. He just met him as he was handed the ball. Fourth and four, a loss of a yard on the play. They will not punt. They will keep the ball on the ground. First and fourth and four at the 26-yard line. And off. Chris right side. He'll gain about two on the play. They'll be first and ten. The Tigers will get the ball. Good defensive effort by the Tigers. They've held. they fumbled twice, and they kept the ball. One thing about the Tigers last year, they averaged three fumbles a game. Why out will be Ronnie Smith, number 19. Three, two, one. At the end of the first quarter, folks, we have a scoreless ball game here in Hinton, and we'll be right back for the second half of the high school game of the week. Outstanding defensive effort. All the wide receivers covered by the great defensive backs of Hinton, and Wolf went down. He will go down at the line of a scrimmage. Great stop by number 66 for Hinton. Doug Gales, who came through. Lots of four yards, I guess five yards on the play, second and 15. 37 to go in the second quarter. Still no game. The game, folks, actually is being won on the defense. And neither offense can really get going because each of the defense is shutting it down. Bill Hughes told me before we get the head coach for Hinton that the way to shut down this ball is to play good defense and go at the quarterback. That's exactly what they've done. And they're going to send three out. And they hand out Tony Ross. Left side. He'll go straight up the middle. Cut back to the left. He'll gain of about five on the play. It'll be second, third, and five. It'll be third and ten on the play. Excuse me, folks. It'll be third and ten on the play. 11 5 to go. Good cut by Tony Watts up the middle. They're opening up the hole. But a quick swarming defense from Hinton, especially by Steel Carr and Gill. They all shoot in to make sure no one will go anywhere. They open it up and they close it very quickly. 46 to go. It'll be third and nine. They mark the ball third and nine. We have a flag on the play. Could be too much time. Four illegal movement left side. That would be called on number 44 for Princeton. Kind of moves his left leg. Illegal motion. We'll send Christian wide out to the right. Smith is on the bench. Quick pitch out. Walk. He's got some daylight. If he cuts back, he gets across to the 30 yard line. Outstanding heads up running. He saw that they were closing in and put his head down and got about two extra yards. Oh, he gets off a good punt and the punt will roll. Taken by 23 to 30, 35. He's met heads on good special teams play by the Tigers. All he gave about six or seven on the play. Alan Terry, one of the opposing tacklers on the play. So it'll be first and 10, second quarter, 9.46 to go. Still no score in the game. Good defensive effort, especially the offensive and defensive line. They're both hitting it out. Defenses are playing well. Mike Sizemore is the quarterback for the Hinton Bobcats. They'll go out of the beer again, handoff to Reed, and he'll go absolutely nowhere. He is met at the line of scrimmage. They call it a loss of a yard on the play, second and 11, depending on where the referees mark it. Also in the backfield, number 40, Gerald Gill. Out of the ball game for the Hinton Bobcats, number 30, Mark Mills. Mills seen some good time. He's blocking quite well for number 33, Chris Reed, the higher meter state qualifier last spring. Right, yet to see the speed. Let's see if he can get outside. He ran in a low 11th last year. Not a bad time for a junior. They have one wide out. We have another flag. This will make the sixth flag in the game so far. Play of game by the hand. Bobcats, it'll be five yards. Mark it back. It'll be second and 16 on the play. Quick call for the Bobcats. They'll probably call the same play that they had already intended to use before the play. Now we have some more confusion. They are going to go back into the huddle and rediscuss plays. Coming out of the ballgame for the number 11, Brian Bowling. They alternate the wide receivers to bring in the play. 
told, Coach Eves told me that he has about two or three plays in his head. He can call what he wants, but preferably it'll be the play that the wide receiver will bring in. They'll go out of the beer again. Second and 15. Make it second and 16. He's dropping back the pass. He's got the receiver almost intercepted again over the outstretched hand of number 82, Richard Chris. All he had to do was pull it in. 8.43 to go before halftime. They're still waiting on the play. And to bring in the play again, Brian Bowling, as I said, they alternate out of a wide receiver position. They'll probably send one wide right. That's what they did last time. Would have been a good play for Chris if he could have caught the ball. It looked like it was going to be kind of intercepted, but well defense. Sloan back to the Autry. He is the rover for the Tigers. Right, you have Richie Wolf. Hey, now, Chris Lee, he's got some daylight. Make that Richard Gill. About 37 again with about two yards on the play, so it'll be fourth and about 13. They will be in the punting formation, in to do the duties. He had a great punt in the first half to save a down ball, number 31 for them. Joe Meadows. He's got a pretty good foot. Let's see if he can get it off, and he gets a beauty. Great one. Taken by Joe Henderson. It's the second time he fumbled. Picks it up again, and he's met right where he was to pick up the ball. He may have taken his eyes off the ball just as it came down, because he saw Dale on the left side. He had all kinds of room on the left side. But he saw the ball in his hands before he caught it. So, okay, first and ten for the Tigers. 7.51 to go. Second quarter, still north court. Good defensive battle. Richie Wolf still with quarterback. And off straight ahead, Jamie Ely. He is a horse. He gets a gain of about five on the play. Make that three to the 35-yard line. Good straight ahead running. They are getting some really some good blocks by the offensive line of the Tigers. Opening up the hole, 275 pounds. Eddie Nick, nice wonder. Roger Griffith, 250 pounds. The average at 230 across the line, as I did say. And they are a bunch of them. Most biggest line Joe Tribuca has had in years. The second and six, they have faint with a gain of four. Seven twelve to go. Hand off again to Ely. That's the way they're beating up. It is to go straight at him. That's what they should have done before Joe Tribuca because of the scouts upstairs finally deciding to see and go with it. It's been the bread and butter play so far. It'll be third and four. Two new backs come in for them. Number 44 for the Tigers. Joe and Brohard, and also number 31 for them, Jamie Ely will stay in, runs to the sidelines after he carries the ball, comes back in to get have a new one. Wide right will be Ronnie Smith will go out of the bone again. We have another flag on the play, make it flag number seven. Number 73, Kevin Thompson is the reason Jamie Ely is having all kinds of daylight to run up the middle. He gets three or four, a carry enough probably to get a first down. We'll see if they can do it. He is a moose. At 6'2", 260 pounds, he's one of those big boys that Joe Tribuca had told me about. Pitch out Ross, he fumbles, but he regains it. He'll barely get back to the line of scrimmage. It bounced off, it's made good pitch out from Wolf, but Wallace spot in his hands before he caught the ball. It'll be fourth and about eight, six twelve to go. Hunting duties again. The guy is seeing a very busy night. Mark Wood will come in again to senior 5'10", 180 pounds. He's got pretty good, he's got a pretty good foot and a deep to receive for Chris Reed. And he hits a wobbler. He traps the ball. It'll go down at the 35-yard line. He's met hard by Alan Perry and Daryl Anderson. Daryl makes up for almost fumbling the ball a second time, and he stops the tailback as he almost got it. It'll be first and 10 at the 35, maybe 36-yard line. The roving back for the Tigers is Chuck Autry. They'll go out of the veer again. Mike Sizemore still the quarterback. Quick handoff up the middle to Richard Chris. We have a flag on the play. Could be clipping an excellent run by number 40, Richard Chris. Make that Gerald Gill. They'll be holding, that's why, no clipping, just holding, that's why you will have the big line to go through. Fly Bowling, check it out to see what Coach Hughes wants with the play. He'll come out going in to bring the play to Mike Sizemore, will be number 30, Mark Mills. Recapping the first half as far as numbers 
going. Hinton really had two good chances and two fumbles by Princeton. They couldn't capitalize good defensive effort. Now they're deep in their own territory. Handoff Reed left side. He'll keep going. So about the 30 yard line gain of about five yards on the play. So it'll be second and 15. Chris Reed, the ball carrier.
to the 27 yard line. Outstanding run. A gain of about 43 on the plate. Just goes right side. No blocking from his offensive line. He does it all as on the former Beaver standout transfer. Because Coach John Shamar leaves to go to Foster County High School, Virginia. He comes to go to Princeton. And what an outstanding run by the 5'8", 185-pound back. His brother Charles, a former Beaver, last year now will attend Concord College. 2.39 to go. Tigers are on the mark, second and three, because of a great outstanding run by Tony Wallace. Gained of 24 yards on the play. Smith is the wideout, so go out of the ball again. Something installed brand new by the Tigers. Wolf looks to pass. Almost caught. Mark Howard, the intended receiver, just kind of dropped the ball out of his hands, but it was thrown low by Wolf, so it'll be third and three for the Tigers as time marks down. 
through the upright. Oh, and Ross doesn't put it through the upright. They always push it through the helmet of the Bobcat. Don't tell me, Ross, I think 609 to go.
that, but I think Tribuco and company over on Princeton's sideline thought about it and said, hey, they may pull the keeper, and that's what they did, and they shut it down perfectly. Well executed by the Princeton defense. Wide out again is Mills. He's going to try and throw it again. They go to read out of the backfield, and he is absolutely nailed by the quarterback and quarterback, Richie Wolf. He'll go nowhere. Almost like last year, they'll go again. 
coach from Bluefield, Freddie Simon. Can he beat the Graham G-Men? We'll see next Friday night. Ricky Wolf in motion. Richard Stoops and uh, Tony Wallace left side. He'll be brought down about the 24-yard line. Rick running on his own. And he pushed back. He was just juking the job. And inside, no one could get a tail off. It's like a hot potato. But he is brought down at the 15-yard line. It looks like second and 15 for the Tigers. They throw the 18 or nothing commanding lead. Wide out Ronnie Smith. And he's looking for Smith. Wolf wants him very bad. And he's got him wide out. He's at the 27. A gain of about two past the original line of scrimmage. So it should be about second and seven, second and eight on the play. But we have a flag. That is the 12th penalty in the ballgame so far.
on the year. And that's something head coach Joe Trebuch of the Tigers wants to eliminate. If they can stop that, then they should be a force to be reckoned with. Out of the veer again. Wide out is bowling. And uh, oh, just dropped right in the backfield.
what you want to know. How does it feel? Oh, it feels great. You know, anytime you can win one, it feels good, and uh, we're glad we won this one. How about Tony Ross? you got to be pleased with him. You said before the game he had potential, but you didn't know how he would do under a game situation. All of a sudden, he explodes 94 yards. Well, we were pleased with Tony. I knew he had the potential to do it. We haven't seen him play under a game situation yet, and tonight was the first time he's played for Princeton, and... Uh, you know, we're real pleased with him. He did an excellent job. Our line blocked well, and uh, he made some good cuts. How about your offensive line? You said that was the strength of this Princeton team. Maybe to go to the state playoffs. If they do well, you'll get there. Tonight, they show that they've got it. Well, we made a few mistakes in there, but they did well, and uh, we just have to go back and work a little bit more and uh, come off a little bit lower on the ball. And, uh, you know, I, I think we got some potential up front, and they just have to prove it. Okay, finally tonight, your defense. I'm going to say, despite Wallace's outstanding effort on, you know, offense, it was your defense that really shut down the Hinton Bobcats. Would you agree? Well, yeah, I agree. Uh, we haven't had a scrimmage game or anything like that. This is the first game, and the defense is well ahead of the offense, and uh, they held us, uh, held them, and uh, until we got on track, and uh, the offense finally got going, and the defense did a great job. Okay, Princeton now 1-0 in high school football play next week. Great game, Bluefield at Graham. We'll see you next week on the High School Game of the Week.